Pray silence all, and listen to this tale. Once, Aristeo, a shepherd, was wandering free, and lusted for a girl to no avail. She was Orpheus' wife, Eurydice. Aristeo chased her, being a lusty male, and caused a dreadful accident, as you'll see. Eurydice was fleeing, and as she fled, a snake bit her on the foot, and she fell dead. Orpheus, the singer, went to fetch her back from the underworld, and had to observe one thing. But as he was returning along the track, he turned and looked at her what suffering followed. He lost her. Oh, alas, alack! He then denounced all women, so angering the Bacchants that they tore him all apart. Good luck to you all. <laughs> the play is about to start. of black, and also brown patches on his little feet. Dear Mopsis, no cattle have come along this track to drink at the stream today. <sighs> and yet, I heard the mooing of a calf there, round the back of these woods. I'm sure young Tirsus is prepared to go find it for you. But stop a while. I have a story. I haven't shared with anyone. <laughs> Serious? Oh, so smile. Yesterday, I saw a lovely girl. She had a boy with her. That was a trial for me because she set my mind a world. She was so beautiful. I cannot keep this secret from you, Mopsis. I wanted to hurl myself in her. No. Oh, how I weep not to have her. It's put me off my food, and when I go to bed at night, I cannot sleep. Oh, Aristeo! This does not look good! Get her out of your mind as soon as you can! Or you'll go crazy! Have you understood? I learned all this when I was a younger man. <laughs> If you allow this love to take root, you'll find it will destroy you. Much the better plan is to nip it in the bud. <laughs> or be resigned to exchange your peaceful life for all the fears and endless torments of a lovesick mind. <laughs> Mopsus. <laughs> Your words are falling on deaf ears. Don't bother saying these things. It's such a waste of breath. I'm very happy shedding tears. I want to love. Your advice is quite misplaced. Love is a sweet sickness. I don't want any healing. It may be poison, but I like its taste. <laughs> I know my loved one finds songs most appealing. Now, I feel like trying out a song. <laughs> it's the best way to show what I'm feeling. So listen, see what you think. It won't take long. <laughs> Oh my! 
saying, like running water in a stream, or like treetop branches slanting with the breeze. It's like a dream, which tells the girl she should be granting all you want. <laughs> she must submit herself to your will. Here's Tiercy running down the hill. Tell us what news you found the car. Yes. Huh? Lucky his horns ain't yet full grown, or he would have done me in. Not huh? He charged me so quick. He would have thrown me, but I whacked him with my stuff. Yep, he's okay now. I got him home. He ate tons of hay. Cool. What a load he finished off. He'll explode. <laughs> ah, but, listen, there's something else to tell. I saw a lady in the woods. Ah, how sweet she was and sang so well. Oh, bless my soul, it did sound good. Her song's like some magic spell. I think the whole world stood stock still to listen. Mopsis, I've got to find her come what may. She's the one I told you about. Control yourself! Lust leads a man astray and causes lots of grief without a doubt. Don't worry. Even if I die today, I'll see what lies in store and seek her out. Mopsis, you stay here beside the stream. I'll find her and fulfill my fondest dream. <laughs> Dear C, your master is mad. You must assist and bring him to his senses. It's your duty. You've got to speak out and tell him to desist. It's shameful seeing him lusting for this beauty. Moxes, servants are fools if they think they had better tell their masters off for feeling fruity. No. He's cleverer than me, and if I want to keep my job, I'll stick to tending sheep. <laughs> Eurydice, please don't run away. I cherish you most dearly. Listen and you'll discover. I have many things to say. I shall speak most clearly. Please don't spurn your lover. I'm not some savage beast. I'll never love another. Speak to me at least. Listen to my cry. Wherever you may flee, I'll follow with all speed. Let love give me wings to fly.
Aristeo chased her, and as she was running through the fields, a snake was lurking in her way. She trod on it, so it sank its fangs into her foot, as snakes do when they pierce their prey. The poison worked so quickly as she fled, it stopped her in her tracks, and she fell dead.
this. My kingdom is in a state of shock. Down here we've never heard a song so sweet. Ixion's wheel has stopped. And that great rock which Sisyphus rolls now serves him as a seat. Tantalus drinks. I can no longer block the water from his lips. All stop to greet this singer. Cerberus listens most intently, and even the Furies agree to treat him gently. This stranger has come down here against the law which shuts our gates to any living face. <laughs> He's clever. You should fear him even more, because perhaps he plans to usurp your place. Other men like him who've reached the shore have always caused you trouble and disgrace. I warn you, Pluto, do not trust the stranger. Be careful. I'm sure he is a source of danger. O oh, ruler of the underworld below, you govern these souls who lived in the upper air. Here, every mortal creature must forego the light of heaven into nature's tender care. I lay before you a tale of utter woe. It's love which guides my steps and brings me here, not to distract your servants from their duty, but for my lady and her perfect beauty. A poisonous snake lay hidden in the grass. It took my lady's life. It broke my heart. My life is empty and worthless now. Alas, the grief and heartbreak tear my soul apart. Maybe you can recall what came to pass when you yourself felt love's compelling dart. You snatched Persephone from the world above. So let me return with Eurydice, my love. You know all mortal things must finally return down here, submitting to your laws. Whatever lives beneath the moon will be obliged to navigate these dismal shores. Nothing can count on immortality. You know our souls one day will all be yours, and then finally we shall be confined down here. This is the fate of all mankind. Thus, when my lady once again shall die a natural death, I will not then complain that she was too young for your harsh laws to apply. Cut down so early. Why could she not attain mature and riper years? If you deny my just request, I can't see what you gain. Her life was full of promise, that's well known. I do not ask a gift, but just a loan. I do beseech you, by the powers that rule the underworld, the Styx, the Archeron, the primeval chaos, and the flaming pool, source of the fiery river Phlegathon, and by that fatal fruit, O queen, which cruel temptation led you once to feed upon, let my love live! But, if this is denied, I ask to die and stay here with my bride. I never thought compassion could be found in our grim kingdom, husband. Yet I see stern hearts, a move to pity all around. And even you are, or so it seems to me. None can resist poor Orpheus's plaintive sound. And even death is moved in sympathy. Would you not yield and grant his urgent prayer for the sake of his song and tender, loving care?
I give her back to you on one condition. You lead the way, and she will follow on. But do not turn or let her in your vision until your journey up to earth is done. Observe this prohibition. If not, she's lost to you, forever gone. I'm glad that here on my exalted throne I can reward the talent you have shown. Come this way. You must return to earth to weep and grieve. It's useless to complain. You've got to leave. That is the law. There's nothing more to say. Can I ever find a song which can express my grief and agony? How will my tears suffice for such a wrong? A source of endless misery. I'll never be consoled, however long I live the life that heaven grants to me. Never has such cruelty been seen before. I'll never love a woman anymore. Henceforth, I'll go in search of novel pleasure. I'll pluck fresh flowers in springtime, and I'll savour the charm of lovely youth. What greater treasure? I'll taste their love, which has a sweeter flavour. <coughs> Do not speak of women's love to me. I will not listen. That 
I guarantee. He is a fool, the man who tries to please a woman, or to adapt his moves to hers. And foolish too, the man who on his knees swears to serve her. Nothing could be worse than her false words, and her desire to tease. Now she wants one thing, now quite the reverse. First she pursues a man, then plays hard to get. The most capricious thing I have ever met. Jupiter showed how true this is indeed. He found a boy and loved the little fellow. <laughs> he had great fun in heaven with Ganymede. And Hyacinth too was cherished by Apollo, whilst even Hercules felt that self-same need with Hylas. Now there's a man you can follow. <laughs> Divorce your wives. That's my advice to men. <laughs> Avoid all women and you'll live again. Hear yeah, how he spurns our love. He makes me sick. <laughs> Come, citizen. He must die. Let's go. Prepare the thyrsus. Light up the fires, take rocks and <coughs> stones to throw. Run, quick! Let's punch him in every way we know. <laughs> <laughs> Thou knight will cut open his chin and pluck out his Kill this loot! drives people to this sorry state. <laughs> How quickly do they sink into the abyss? Surely 
We all must grieve for Orpheus face. Clear that things went seriously amiss. <laughs> You've seen what havoc Bacchus can create. So, what's the lesson to be learned from this? Don't let alcohol become your master. It will unhinge your mind and cause disaster. <laughs>